Um, yeah, I mean, it was a typical exhibition game. Um, some good, some not so good. Uh, this is their second one. So it, they, I think it showed a little bit uh, that they're uh, a little bit deeper right now than us. Um, you know, a couple of people that normally would start for them uh, didn't today, and they kind of mixed it around. As for us, obviously, uh, I thought we got off to a good start for Tino offensively, um, but our defense at times was just mediocre. Uh, when we missed uh, wide open threes, they got runouts in transition. I thought we did a poor job uh, in the second and third quarter in transition defense. Um, it's something, you know, we got to fix. Uh, but, you know, I think we'll get better as we go along. Um, we didn't shoot the ball particularly well. Uh, you know, that, that second quarter was rough. Um, second half was roughly even. But, um, you know, I, I just – it's kind of – part of it was about what I expected. Some of it was a little bit disappointing in that, you know, we just missed some wide open shots, and I just thought our defense broke down at times, uh, particularly uh, in transition. Cream, we'll start with you. Hey, Mike. Um, I guess the first thing to ask is about Tina. How nice was it to see that, you know, I'm sure you guys see it every day in practice, but everybody, you know, from the outside has been waiting to see her in a jersey, and it didn't look like she had any rust at all. No, I thought she was pretty good. Um, you know, we, we tried to keep everybody's minutes down. Uh, obviously, she scored 18 points in 20 minutes, um, you know, very efficient. Um, you know, I think that when she's got the ball, though, we can do a better job of, uh, and, and her too, be a better job of offensive rebounding, but I thought it was a great first start for her. Um, and, you know, we just got to kind of get the rest of our group around her pretty soon. And just one follow up. I want to ask about Teresa. Um, obviously, you know, she had a hot start also. I think she got in a little bit of foul trouble, but besides that, were you happy with what you saw from her? Yeah, I mean, I think the foul problems, I think we're defensively being a little bit late on some coverages. Um, you know, we're, we're playing a little bit different defensively than she saw in Connecticut. It's just a little bit different style. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's a good first style. I like, like the fact that she was aggressive at the start of the game. Um, you know, and, and she, along with a lot of others, this is the first time they've played in an organized game in quite a while. So, um, I, you know, Decent start. Thank you. Jen. Hey, Coach. I uh, wanted to ask you about two uh, young players, Jillian Aileen with her rebounding inside and then Shug Sutton, uh, you know, kind of leading the team from the point guard spot. Well, I mean, neither one of them shot the ball well, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, uh, Shug didn't make a shot. Uh, and uh, Jillian, I think, was like three for 11 or 12. Uh, but Jillian's rebounding was terrific. I mean, as she was when she was in college, she was one of the best rebounders in the country. Um, and I, you know, had a talk with her the other day that you know her biggest way to contribute to us is to rebound and get us, you know, tough, tough inside play. Um, you know, we wish everybody else was aggress as aggressive as she was as far as you know getting on the boards. We need uh, a few more people to offensive rebound the ball, especially when you're not shooting the ball well. Um, but I was, I was happy with that. I thought Shug's defense was good. Um, you know, I think she, you know, pushed the tempo, um, but we can get better in a lot of areas. Erica. Thank you. Hey coach Erica Ayala here with the athletic. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, kind of setting into play some systems. You talked about that pregame and that you were really going to take these scrimmages, not just from what you've been doing in practice, but also thinking about how you need to restructure game day. I'm just curious if you were able to glean out anything from today. Um, that typically in a first exhibition game, people get impatient. Um, I think that... Um, you know, some of the things you work on every day starts about the door. That's one of the things as a coach you're looking for to see, you know, how much people can retain what you want to do. Um, mixed results today uh, in that regard. Um, you know, and we, we don't, without uh, some of our other post players here, without Elena and Maisha and Erica McCall, it's hard to get a read on how some things will look. Um, we're, we have a battle for backup guard spots. I mean, we know that 
Natasha and Ariel Atkins and Leilani are going to play a lot. Now somebody else has to step up and say, hey, I'm that fourth fourth one. Uh, and, and we'll have the, the ability eventually to play, uh, you know, a bigger lineup and, and cover some of that that way. But, you know, we have a battle going on for those other spots, and that's kind of what we're going to be looking at over the next, you know, week or so. And you alluded to this regarding Tina Charles, but we know uh, up here in New York that she did have a tendency to, to feel obligated maybe to take over games and that uh, really maybe impacted how she played down the stretch. I'm wondering if maybe um, you had a conversation with Tina or are there just continued expectations that you have as far as being able to be reliable, but also to get other people involved? Well, Tina's always going to be a go-to player. I mean, I think that, you know, that's one of the reasons you would want to have her on your team. Uh, I think that there's a, a respect amongst our players that, you know, no one person has to carry the load. Um, you know, sometimes she got put in that position in New York, uh, but she's going to be surrounded by really talented, you know, offensive teammates. Um, but we're going to also rely on her. I mean, our, our, she can not only create for herself, but she'll be able to, because of her presence, create shots for other teammates. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day when we can put her and Elaine and some others on the court together. And now one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, it, it's really hard for teams to play us that that way you know tonight in a game like this you know when when she got that kind of coverage um you know she was able to score and if she got doubled and she was able to find teammates christy hey coach um you were speaking about how it's going to be a dog fight in the backup guard spot without saying that it's the you know the retainment of the information what other tactical skills are you looking for for that coveted role? Well, I think the first thing is you got to make some shots. I mean, you, you know, by, by definition, uh, if you're playing uh, on the wing for us, you've got to make open shots. And, you know, that was a struggle for a lot of people tonight. Um, eventually that'll happen. And then you have to be able to defend your position. I mean, you, you can't get outscored at your position. And we have to have better ball pressure. We have to do a good job in coverage on pick and rolls. And that's the kind of stuff I'm looking at right now. I think that's it. Thank you, coach. All right. You bet. Thanks. Me, Erica, I was going off of, uh, you have to get people involved. You ain't see what was going on in New York the last years. I have been. That's why I asked the question on that team. You playing with me, man. <laughs> I'm coming for all y'all. You can take me on New York, but New York's still in me. Love to see it. Bugging. Don't get people involved. You bugging. Kareem. What's up, Tina? I don't know how to follow that, though. <laughs> um, just kind of take us through what was it like? You know, this is the first time you, you know, been in this jersey on this floor. You know, it's been so long since you, um, you know, been in the game out here. Just what was like this debut like for you? Um, it, was, it was cool. It was good. Um, I enjoyed playing. You know, it's always great to be back with Coach T, you know, someone who believes in you, uh, someone who wants you. Uh, so it was it was great. It was good to be here. What is the process for you just trying to kind of get ingrained with this team? I mean, everybody knows kind of like what you can do and you didn't show much rust at all today, but, you know, you still kind of got to get in a groove with the rest of your teammates and all that. How's that process going and is there and, and just how do you speed that up as much as possible? I think that's the beauty of it, you know, that it is a process, that you have to be in tune with what your process is that's going to take your team to win. Um, and, you know, we're, we're all – engaged in finding what that is you know coach t is going to continue to put us in positions to be successful um he's going to continue to challenge us uh we're going to continue to challenge one another so i think with the starting group that we had out there you know a lot is on us to go out and perform so then the second group coming in can match that or even take us to another level so uh being that this was our first preseason game um I, obviously we have things to work on but there's a lot of good things that we can take away from it Cool, cool. Thank you. Jen. Hey, Tina. Uh, kind of building off of that, is there a teammate that you feel like you've developed particularly good chemistry with so far? Um, I would say Natasha Cloud. You know, she's very vocal, um, communicates a lot. Um, I haven't played with a really great point guard like that in, in, a, in a while, you know, who holds themselves accountable, who wants to be great, who wants others around them to be great, that communicates in such a passionate way. Um, so I would have to say Natasha Cloud. I mean, 
you know, Leilani and Ariel, um, you know, getting to know Teresa Play Science a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I would have to say Natasha Cloud. And then how did it feel tonight, just, you know, with no fans, but still you've got the PA announcer and um, all of that kind of, um, you know, all the stuff that goes into a game day, but not the fans and it's a preseason game. Like, how did it feel? Um, so fine. I didn't really feel fine. I'm just engaged with the game. You know, I, I think it would be probably different if, if I were playing in the bubble or there's absolutely nobody there, but it, it, it was fine for me. Christy? Tina, coach was talking about the importance of, you know, some defensive rotations that were a little bit off, especially in the second half. What did you see in that regard? And what do you feel needs to be shored up on that side of the court? Definitely defensive rotations. Uh, definitely more than defensive rotations. We needed to get on the boards, um, turnovers, uh, getting to the free throw line. We were fouling a lot. Uh, again, that's all things that we just have to continue to work on, especially with certain groups that are out there on the floor, um, especially when you have a young group out there, if there's not a veteran who's out there on the court to help them and assist them in the coverages that they need to be in. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it was more than just defensive rotations. He was being very, very nice and just limiting to just defensive rotations. And at one, one, right, right. And one quick follow-up, pardon me for the interruption, but one quick follow-up on this. Um, with regard to the, the dogfight in the backup guard position, how do you, as, as a bat, try to, I guess, explain and, and lead the youngsters into what they need to do to stick on the WNBA roster? I always tell, you know, it's when you say that, you know, Pri had came up to me yesterday and had asked me, you know, what can she do when she gets in the game? And I said, I always feel like those who come off the bench have an advantage to be able to see what's going on in the game, to see what to match, to see how to get better. But um, I just told her to just do one thing and just try to do that one thing really well. Um, make that your DNA. And Pre came out tonight and she just took over. I think she was the best player tonight on the floor, just um, on defensively, offensively, finding her shot. I'm, I'm just so happy and proud of her. Um, but she did just that. Thank you. Erica? Thank you. Yeah. Tina, like I had asked coach earlier, I just wanted to get your thoughts also on being able to balance being a go to player and also being able to facilitate. Um, it's something that I do. Um, you know, you've been around, you've seen it. So I was kind of shocked and taken back when you made the comment, but it's just something that I do. If I get double team, pass it out. Um, if I'm supposed to score, go out and score, but I'm always going to have that attack mentality. You know, the main reason I came here is because I was encouraged to be myself. Um, and, and that's something that I want to continue to, to do, especially when I have my teammates that believe in me and want me to go out there and do what I need to do or find open shots for them or set hard screens or run the floor hard to drag in the defense or they're getting open threes on the perimeter. Um, it's something that I definitely uh, take pride in. I also wanted to ask you about just game day. It's a little bit different, obviously, now with dealing with coronavirus. It seemed like Coach Tebow wanted to also use these scrimmages to get a better flow of what a game day will look like with new protocols. Um, you know, just your take on on some of those adjustments and if you think it impacted your preparation for tonight. Now, uh, you know, when you think in the bigger picture of, of COVID and how it's, it's um, impacted individuals to come into a game, this is nothing. You know, there's families who lost loved ones. There's families who've lost their jobs. There's families who are trying to find out when they're gonna get their next meal. So if you're telling me I have to come in and put on a mask and test between seven and 1130, that's, it doesn't, this is nothing. Um, I think we all were forced to be still. We all were able to see what was going on in the world and how it inf impacted everyone. Um, so for me, this this is nothing. This this is it's nothing hard at all. Thanks, Tina. Best of luck. Thank you, Christy. Did you have another question? I'll take that as a no. So thank you, Tina. Thank no, you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll start with Cream. Hey, Teresa. How you doing? Uh, first game in the Jersey. Oops, I don't know why my phone is doing things. First game in the Jersey, got, came out, got the start. You know, how did you feel? You were super aggressive early. Just kind of take us through the start of your day and what was today like for you? 
Today was a really big day for me. I was really excited to um, have the opportunity to step on the court with my teammates playing against somebody that isn't us. And, um, you know, in the first half, we were just working the ball around um, and we were just getting some movement and I was just the recipient of some really great passes. Um, so we're getting things done like that. You know, there is a, uh, it's day one and it's, it's really great to be on a team that's so supportive and, and helpful and, and positive throughout everything. Um, and today is definitely a, a growing day for me, especially. And this is something to build off of. And I asked Tina the same thing, and I'm probably similar to what you just said about today was a growing day. I'm just curious, how is the process of just learning this new team, learning your new teammates, learning what Mike wants? How is that process coming along? And what things can you do to you know, speed it up since you guys are doing it on such a, you know, short training camp, short time before the season starts? Um, every day we just, we work on, um, you know, the same things every single day, um, ball screens, pick and roll. And our biggest thing is communication. We are very, we're a very patient team. We communicate really well with one another and we are just learning um, how each other plays. I think that just takes time and a way to speed it up is just being on the court and spending more time with your teammates and learning their tendencies. Um, and I think we will over time. Um, and I think that we have a really smart team. So I think you'll be seeing a little bit more chemistry as we as we move along. Um, hopefully this next game on Saturday will come out and you'll see a team that is uh, turning the ball over a little bit less and is finding each other a little bit more. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Christy. Yes, um, Teresa, I saw you speaking with uh, Lena Deladon. Obviously, she didn't play tonight, but what kinds of things were you all chatting about and what kinds of information was she sharing with you or, and you with her? Um, you know, being able to be on a team with such a superstar like Elena is it's incredibly special. Um, anytime that she has something to say, especially somebody that plays very similar to her, um, I, I listen. And today... You know, she was giving me a lot of pointers about things that where she gets shots, where she gets her movement from, and also defensively where my feet need to be and things like that. Um, being able to play within our defensive system correctly. Um, and, you know, she's been extremely supportive and helpful throughout this entire training camp, doing everything um, to help me out as much as possible. And I'm just really grateful to have a, a superstar like her um, and being able to, you know, grow and learn. With, uh, with somebody like that. Thank you. Jen. Hey, Teresa. Um, you know, I'm here in the arena still, but from your perspective, how much did this feel or not feel uh, like a normal game, you know, like pre-COVID normal game? Um, it, it felt more like the bubble than, than a pre-COVID normal game. Um, you know, we are still getting to the point where we're trying to get fans in and we're trying to do everything the right way and making sure that we're um, doing the protocol the right way. As far as missing our fan base, you know, it's, it's the same. Um, we did have a few select few family and friends here that felt really good to, you know, hear their support throughout the game. But um, as far as feeling like a normal game, I don't think that it felt like a normal game. I felt like it was more like a bubble setting, if anything. Thanks. Any final questions for Teresa? I think that's it. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, guys. Ready? Cream. Hey, hey, what's up, Jillian? Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, not a bad debut, 10 and 12. Kind of just take me through, you know, how you were feeling and, and what was working so well today. Um, honestly, at the beginning of the game, I was definitely nervous. I think that's just first game feels for it whenever I start a season. But um, once I got out there, like, I'm so thankful for, you know, Natasha and Ariel and Tina and TP and they just inlay, like, they just helped me feel so comfortable and so calm. So like, once I got out there and got into like my groove, you know, and we were communicating, I was okay after that first like couple minutes. When you're in these games, you know, um, Tina was kind of just talk talking about, you know, she tells young, she tells folks to kind of focus on one thing. And, and Mike even said, hey, you know, she went out there, grabbed 12 boards. We need everybody else to do that, too. Is that kind of your focus? You're like, hey, I'm going to go crash the boards and, and, and let everything else kind of come to me? 
Absolutely. And I've always been a big time rebounder. That's been my thing naturally. So uh, Tina and Coach Tia, right? Like going out there and rebounding and everything else falls into place. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Jen? Hey, Jillian. Just Hi. curious, you know, for you, how did this game feel? Um, you know, obviously in ESA, uh, you know, where you're going to play regular season games, but no fans um, and it's, you know, a scrimmage. Like how normal or weird did it feel to have no fans, but a PA announcer and all that? You know, I would say for um, the fans that we did have and the PA announcer helped it feel a little bit um, regular, but it's you can definitely feel the change without having fans and kind of having that extra energy that I think carries all sports. Um, so we do miss that, but um, I think that the league did a great job with our PA announcer and the fans that we did allow in to um, help us co carry that momentum that we would uh, not usually have um, because of COVID. Did it feel like a like a game day? Yeah, it did. It did. Everything from start to finish today definitely did. Yeah. Thanks, mm -hmm. Christy. Hey there. You said you were focusing, obviously, just to to calm the mind and everything like that. But coming into the game with a game plan in place, how do you feel after what you guys really accomplished in terms of executing what the game plan was going into the game? Yeah, I think that overall, looking back on the game, I think we did a lot of good things. And then there's a lot of things that we definitely are going to work on. Um, I think we executed what we needed to. I think we needed to take it up a couple levels. Obviously, um, we didn't win the game, but I believe that we're going to come in, we're going to work hard and work on the things that we were uh, not so great in today. And just a, a quick follow up, if I could, just with the guards, coach said there was a, a dogfight for the backup guard position. Where do you gauge that? And what does that feel like on the inside to see that kind of battle going on for that spot? Everyone here is super competitive. I think um, from the first day of training camp, everyone's exactly like Coach C is fighting for that position in a guard. And I think every guard who stepped onto the court today showed, you know, why they should be that player or, you know, what they can add to the team. So I think you can see it in every second that any of those guards are on the floor, especially uh, pre today. You know, she came in and had nine points in the last like three or five minutes. So yeah, that shows the competitiveness that Coach T wants us to have and, you know, how we're fighting for those positions. Thank you. Any last questions for Jillian? I think that's it then. Thank you. Thank you.